Hi, I'm Wanda from Land of Craft, and those of you who follow us know that we like 10 inch squares, and specifically layer cakes. So you can see in the quilt behind me that we've got something different. Our half square triangles are actually curved, and we achieve that effect by using this ruler here. It's called Curves for Squares, and I just love it. Um, it gives a whole new dimension to, um, to layer cakes or to squares in, in general. So let's get on and I'll tell you about the ruler, show you how to use it and we'll sew a couple of blocks together so you can see the effect. So this is what the block looks like when it's been cut and sewn and I'm going to go through all those steps with you shortly. But I thought firstly I'd show you some of the things that you can do with this block. So you can have it running this way and I have the running in strips on the quilt and on the board behind me. Now you can also turn it into a curved diamond and I actually think that looks like one of those um, baubles at Christmas time and you could make a table runner using Christmas fabrics and greens and golds and reds. You can also make it into a pinwheel. So we just run around and there you have a curvy pinwheel. Now another thing you could do with this is you can have it as um, a flying geese or um, an arrowhead, I guess you'd call it. So what you want to do is bring that round like that and bring that round like that. And you can have it, you can see there, the curvy arrowheads. So it's quite a versatile block. You can do such a lot with it. Uh, and we'll get on now and show you what to do next. Okay, so the Curves for Square Ruler is by Creative Grids. Now all Creative Grids have these lovely grips on the back and that means that you, when you're positioning your ruler on your fabric you can move it around as much as you like but as soon as you apply pressure it's not going to move anywhere. And I'll show you that now. See, I can move it wherever I like. Now I just apply a bit of pressure and you can see I can't move it now. It's going to grip and it means it won't slip around on the fabric so you're going to have no trouble cutting your curves. Now if you have a close look here, you can see that it's marked from 5 inches up to 10 inches. So you can cut curves on squares that are 5 inches wide, uh, 6 inches, 7, 8, 9 and up to 10. So I'm going to be working with 5 inch squares and that's what I've got here. I've got two contrasting fabrics and they're each 5 inch square. And now to do this, you need them both to be facing up. Alright, so normally we put right sides together. In this case, we're having this one here on the bottom is going to be facing upwards. And we're going to place this one with the right side facing upwards on top. Now we just match up the edges. And we also make sure that those diagonal points match up. Okay, so we've got those there. Now I find the best thing for me when I'm cutting is to turn this so that it's on point so that the points are, are facing like this. Now I take the ruler and I'm going to line up the five inch line along the edge, the top edge and one side. And now the most important thing is that you make sure that that where the five inch line runs off the ruler lines up on your diagonal point. Now I'm going to be using a 28 millimeter um, alpha cutter but you can use a 45, it's just I find that these smaller cutters are ideal for cutting out curves. Now remember we've got our ruler, we're going to apply our pressure so it won't move and we just very carefully, just take your time, it's not a race, we're going to cut around the curve so now I have four pieces of fabric I'll just take those apart Okay, so that's my squares. So what I do now is I take one piece, so I've taken the bottom piece from each, and put them together, and there we are, we've got these other pieces together here. So now I'll go and I'll show you how to sew these together. Okay, so before I go and sew these together, I'll just quickly show you what you need to do if you have a 10 inch square. So I have a 10 inch square here, normally you would have two, I've just got one because I'm showing you how this ruler works. Alright, so what you would do with this is you make sure that you line up this end where the line runs off on your diagonal and the same on this end. And you can see here, you have some fabric sticking out. That's okay, you don't have to worry about that. The most important thing is to have your line along your edges, so your 10 inch line, and to have your, where it runs off this ruler, lined up with your diagonal points. 
So I have my two pieces of fabric here and now I'm going to place them right sides together. Now as you can see, nothing matches and that's fine. We're going to fix that in a moment. So what we do is we take these two ends here and we just match them up. And I like to stick a pin in, just about a half an inch down. It's only until the, the needle catches in the fabric and then we'll get started and we'll maneuver this so that it all meets together. So I'm just going to pop that in here. Now I'm using a quarter inch seam. Okay. If you find you're having problems with this, you may like to use a walking foot, but with the faff it's already got a built-in walking foot anyway, so I don't have any problems. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my left hand to guide the top material and my right hand to guide the bottom material. We don't want to pull the material, we simply want to guide it through the machine. And the whole idea is to match these edges up and to keep them as close as possible. Now we're using a quarter inch seam. You can just manipulate the fabric so that it lines up. Now if you come to a point where you think that you need to move the fabric a bit more, have your needle in the needle down position. And just lift the foot and just move it around until the bits match together again. Take your time with it. It's not a race. And so just use your, your left hand to maneuver that top material around. to join at the end. Okay, and there you go. So now we'll go and we'll press that and it'll be nice and flat. So I've finger pressed the seam to one side and now I'll just take the iron and run it along there, along the seam, just very gently. Okay, and then just run her off to one side. And there we go. So now we need to trim it. So now I'm going to show you how to trim your, triangle, your half square triangles. Now they're a little bit different than ordinary half square triangles because we don't have a straight seam line to work with. We have a curved line so we just need to do something a little different. So what I've got here, I'm going to trim them back to four and a half. So I take my ruler and I find my four and a half inch mark and I've also got my 45 degree mark. Now I'm going to line the 45 degree mark making sure that it's at the join of the seam line and the same at the top here and you can see the curves underneath there you can't use that to to work with so you need to just use your your two ends out here i'm going to put the 45 the um four and a half inch mark just bring it in a little bit i don't want to put it exactly along the edges because i want to trim so making sure i've got those all exact and that's great so i'll just get my ruler uh, sorry my cutter and that one side and along the other. Now I'm just going to turn my mat so that we can trim the other side. Take it round twice so that I have the seam running along again. Now this time I'm going to line the four and a half inch lines up on the edge. So again I have my 45 degree line running along, along the diagonal and I have my four and a half inch line down here and my four and a half inch line across here. So again and I'm going to trim this side and along the top and there we are I have my half square triangle is now trimmed to four and a half inches so if you're like me and you like curves on squares then I thoroughly recommend this ruler it's brilliant and it does a great job looks really really nice so uh, if you've enjoyed this tutorial give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel